Hi, Mr. Durrance here. Good to see each and every one of you from Avon Elementary School. I certainly miss every one of you uh, this year as I've not been able to uh, spend as much time there at the school. Uh, but just know each one of you are near my heart every day. Uh, and I think about you every day. My new member is a, as a member of the school board, my new role uh, for the district, uh, where I really think about all the schools. But Avon Elementary is always going to be near and dear to my heart uh, as I spent all that time with you the last couple years and uh, just walking the halls and I really miss every one of you every day. Uh, I've been asked to read the next chapter uh, in your book of Bramble Heart and that's chapter 11 and that is by the author Henry Cole and I appreciate the opportunity to do that. I know there's been some really uh, incredible people that have read the other chapters uh, before me and I hope that I'm able to uh, live up uh, to the standard they have set for me. Uh, I know that we've gotten through the first 10 chapters and uh, chapter 11 is entitled Practice. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and read that to you. I have a very beautiful set beside, behind me and hopefully you'll enjoy uh, the view of uh, where we have uh, this video set up. And uh, I really appreciate uh, the opportunity to read the book. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on chapter 11. Twig started playing with fire. Char's fire, that is. He cajoled and scratched the little dragon, exper experimenting with the intensity and direction of the flame. At first, to get used to the novelty of using Char as a torch, he tried simple things like igniting a dried oak leaf. Then the experimenting became more involved. By directing Char slightly, Twig discovered he could burn the letters of his name in a piece of wood. It took practice, but after many botched attempts, Twig figured out the exact right amount of stroking and scratching and encouraging, getting the correct heat, intensity, and amount of flame. The little dragon was perfectly happy to oblige. He breathed out long and slow. The flame was blue, white, hot, capable of melting the hardest of metals and minerals. Miraculously, it didn't seem to affect Char's nose or mouth. Lily stopped by to check on their progress. Hey, Twig, she said, nuzzling Char. Have you thought about how Char could act as, uh, well, a bellows and fire pit all in one? He could maybe help you with your metal craft assignment. The homework ones, anyways. I beat you to it, Twig said. Look what I already did. He held up two pieces of copper wire that had been melted together, crossed in the middle, in half a second, Char welded them perfectly. All I had to do was point him in the right direction and scratch him a little. And look here, Twig reached for an iron nail. It had been curled in the shape of an S shape, in an, into an S shape. Our next project, he heated the nail in the right place, right temperature, and I pounded the shape out perfect. I'm impressed, said Lily. There's more, said Twig. He brought out another nail, this time pulled and twisted evenly but pieces of copper wire had been heated and twisted with it. The dull iron and shiny copper swirled together into a metal ribbon. The result was a well-executed piece of metal craft. That's good, even good enough for Professor Burdock, Lily remarked. I'm thinking I can do well enough with my buddy here to get my take-home assignment done, maybe even well enough to earn master. Maybe you're thinking a little ahead of yourself. Could be, but I've got some ideas. I'm ready for anything that Burdock can throw at me. Twig was already getting ideas of what to use for his new sundial now that he had Char as an assistant. A whole new range of materials and parts had opened up. His room was full of things that would work. Assembling them, however, had been another thing altogether. Now his projects could be bigger, fancier, and more elaborate. This would be a delicate work. He hoped he could harness and direct Char's fire to weld the perfect sundial. And Twig was noticing something else. The intricate pattern of Char's scales and delicate veins in his wings were in inspiration, in inspiration, were an inspiration. Char was a beautiful creature. When he got home, he rummaged through the piles and pieces of parts, finally finding exactly what he knew would work. He gathered some of the pieces and then raced from the house down the path towards the clock tower, anxious to make a fresh start on the assignment. He was only a five minute scamper to the clock when, as he bounded over the roots of a giant oak, he heard a familiar voice. Going somewhere in a hurry, aren't we? 
Bo was sitting on one of the roots, paws clasped as though he had been waiting for twig. The look on his face was kind, but no nonsense. He peered over his spectacles, his burly eyes raised. Well, he asked, important engagement? Twig was sunk. Bo had that, I'm not in any hurry, but this may take a while manner. Charles would be starving. I, uh, yes, Uncle Bo, I'm sort of a king, kind of a hurry, he, he, I guess, he stammered. Hmm, where to, Bo asked. Uh, nowhere special, Twig gulped. With, what is that you, you have there, a clock piece? Anything you want to talk about, Twig? The raccoon asked gently. I mean, sometimes secrets can become burdens. Twig looked a little uneasy. I don't have any secrets, I mean burdens. No? Good. Because isn't it good if you find yourself going out of your way, Bo glanced down the path, to keep things from your friends or family? Um, yes sir. You know, I remember once, a long time ago, when I was carrying around a burden, a terrible burden, Twig's heart sank. He didn't have the time and wasn't in the mood for one of Bo's ancient stories. Really, he said, edging a bit down the trail? Yes. I was about your age, I found something, something very unusual, very special. Twig stopped suddenly, interested and wary. I didn't tell a soul, Raccoon continued, not even my mother or father, afraid they'd think I was crazy, and you know, what, what, Uncle Bo, I never did tell anyone, ever, I still have the secret. Really? You never told? Nope. I've kept it to myself for nearly an eagle's age, and you know how you know what else? What? Wish I had. Wish I had told somebody. At least then I would have some, would have had the burden off me. A secret isn't worth much if you can't share it. Of course, it doesn't make it very much of a secret, if you tell. Well, it's sort of like a cherry turnover. If you share it with somebody, it's a lot more delicious. Twig stood there thinking he was glad to be able to share his secret with Lily. Nothing is tougher than being untrue to yourself twig or to others. Sometimes keeping a secret can get you into trouble. Just a picture here. Twig looked down, he pondered, telling Bo about Char. He didn't. He wasn't ready. Thanks, Uncle Bo. I'll keep what you said in mind. I need to go. Bye. And he dashed away. He and Char had a project to do. Again, it's a picture of the story. And that is the last page of our chapter. And we're on to chapter 12, Becoming Masterful. Again, thank you for the opportunity to read for you. And I hope uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed spending time with you, even if it was through the video. Uh, and I'll be on campus uh, some more as the year goes on. And I really miss each and every one of you. Thank you.